Hello dudes and dudettes. Today's mission. The rats have decided to chew my underbonnet or hood, depending on what part of the world you're from, uh, the underbonnet insulation. And they've had a real good go at it. And now all of this rubbish is all over my nice new shiny engine and getting sucked in the air intake. So I'm going to change it. Um, yeah, I've got it on the dining table. Uh, it'll go down well. But anyway, um, I'll worry about that when I come to it. Much easier to ask forgiveness than it is to ask permission. So right. I've got three tools to choose from. and uh, not sure which is going to be the most effective. We will find out. Um, this is probably maybe the easiest one to use. They just slide in. Oops, sorry. They just slide in underneath and then you lever up and, well... That was hard. So uh, there's a bunch of these. Um, yeah, they're all over the place. There's another one there. And just check that off. Oh, look at this. They're all coming off. Real easy. And there's another one. Again, trying to film while I'm doing it. But yeah, these all pop off. Um, a little clip for something there. Not entirely sure. Another little clip for the washer bottle. It's there. Ooh. Well, that was a bit tighter. Another one down there somewhere. And like that. All right, I'll do the rest. You get the gist. Um, I'll get that off and then we'll lift it and we'll see what it looks so like. they're all now off. Easy done. Piece of cake. There's a lot of them, but they're all out. Uh, I'm going to wait now because I need an extra set of hands. I don't want to end up folding this up because I'm going to use it as a template just to get that curve right um but i take i took the struts off too because they were going to be in the way so uh, there's another video you'll see that where i take the struts off it's really easy um and also thanks to my mate who came and helped me take this bonnet off um word to the wise don't leave your car in the sun when it's 35 degrees outside and then grab the bonnet to lift it off because it burns and then you can't drop the bonnet and you end up with um, nice shiny hands all the way across your palms because you can't drop the bonnet. Anyway, they're all off, all done. This whole thing now, it all moves. It's all loose, ready to come off, but I'm going to uh, take it off in one hit, wait for my other half to come home. She can give me a lift. Dudes, dudettes, we're back. Yes, I'm a long way away and my wonderful um, camera system is currently sitting on the staircase. Hope you can hear me. Lots has happened. Lots of cleaning with citrus degreaser cleaner, uh, three or four goes at that, all good. Word to the wise, don't use it as a hand cleaner. Tingles a bit. All cleaned. Now I've just got to go with brake cleaner, fix it all, get it all sorted. Over here, which I will show you later, down there I've got the old um, underbonnet mat on top of the new stuff. I'll go with that with my phone and show you that a bit closer. But for now, I've got to go around, clean it, get it ready for the sticky stuff, which apparently I get one go at. Yeah, <laughs> fun. So we get one go at putting this on. If it's all cockeyed and screwed up, eh, I've only got me to blame. And um, it could be entertaining, but uh, no other way to learn. Get on with it, get it done. As promised, here is the, um, the old mat, uh, as you can see. It's a real mess. Um, but. Uh, we cleaned the back of it off because it was covered in dust. So if you're going to do this, just be aware that the back side of these are filthy. So, um, yeah, i uh, done that. This new stuff, it's got this backing on it. So, uh, yeah, apparently you get one shot at sticking it down. Going to be interesting. It's hard to cut too, so get some really, really good scissors. But um, that's the plan. Uh, you can see my workshop. It's a um, dining table. Um... Luckily, my other half, she's very understanding and um, didn't have much choice, really, because she was at work when I did this. So it's on the dining table. Technically, it's food related. This bonnet is what they call a clamshell bonnet because it goes up like that and down and up like that. 
and it's a clam shake. So they call it a clam shell bonnet. Now for me, people eat clams, that's technically food. So this clam shell bonnet is actually probably related to food. So therefore on a kitchen dining table, perfect fit, it's meant to be there. So my workshop, it's a wonderful place. Uh, I've got lots to do, break cleaning, lots of cleaning. I'll come back to you in a minute, but I'll show you this too. Not a bad place to work, eh? That's the view. It's a glorious day out there. It's like 30 degrees, but beautiful day. Anyway, I digress. So that's part of my workshop, dining table. Ah, lovely place to work. Floor with sheets. And here comes my cutting room. So this is my cutting room. Yes, it's a bedroom. And I've um, nicked this as well. So I can cut this mat on this cutting board, on the bed, and yeah, hopefully not cut through and make a real mess of everything. But I'm babbling on like an idiot. So um, here we go. I'm gonna do lots and lots of degreasing, brake cleaning now to make sure everything that's gotta be stuck is nice and clean. Oh, I did have to do a quick repair. That thing there had a wire coming to it from under the windscreen with a little 10 mil bolt. I turned it like, ugh barely a turn at all and it just broke and snapped so jb weld i'm hoping whatever that does answers on a postcard comment for me um oh like subscribe that'd be awesome i need all the help i can get um so yeah like subscribe comment on what you think why would there be a wire from under the windscreen attached to the underside of the bonnet i'm sure it's not the bonnet open warning there is no under bonnet light I'm a bit clueless, so let me know. Comments, please. What is that for? And hopefully I've got a connection there with JB Weld. But anyway, I'll keep going. And um, there's my tripod. There's my other camera. Hello. Okay, just a quick update. I just literally started using brake clean and apparently the paint on this, um, it's really thin, so another little tip, don't use brake cleaner. So I'm gonna have a go with some isopropyl alcohol, 100% alcohol. Mm, 100% alcohol, later. Okay, I'll carry on. Um, another little tip. Uh, when I took the bonnet off, before I did, I taped right up to the edges of the hinges. So that's the front line, that's the side line, obviously. Um, it just makes it so much easier um, when you're putting it back on. You just line the hinges back to the tape line. All good and clean. Um, looking good. The isopropyl alcohol works good. Just get it off very quickly. So she's all degreased. She's ready to get stuck down. I've got a dilemma. I've seen this done many times on YouTube, people doing this um, underbonnet stuff. So you're probably thinking, why are you showing me when it's all over the internet? But what I'm, every time I've seen it, what I see is the raised parts here, and then you've got a little lip and then a big dip. And it, it just gets, well, it just looks lumpy and bumpy. You know, it, uh, it doesn't look, like that i know that's horrible but you see how that's basically just flat with a couple of ridges through it and all nice and tidy nice and neat there's not lots of lumps and bumps so if i do this the same way and just literally stick it down into here onto these high bits after cutting the holes for the washers and everything but if i just do that it's going to be lumpy and bumpy and I don't want that, to be honest. I'd like it to be a bit smoother. I don't, uh, I'm, I'm being fussy. Yes, I get it. I know I'm being a pain, I'm being fussy, but I was once told if a job's doing worth doing, it's worth doing sometime. So yeah, uh, dilemma, how to fix a problem. I have kind of thought of a way of doing it, but I don't know if it's gonna work. So we'll lift this up and I'll show you what I mean. 
Now you see on the back of this, you see how all the shapes are there and intact, pretty much. I'm thinking I might try and cut them shapes out. So cut all the shapes that are the lowest points, which are now the highest points on the back of this, obviously. Um, if I cut them shapes out, and then I lay them shapes in here, maybe leave a little bit of a tab so I can tuck it under there. If I stick it face back onto that, hmm, and then somehow, yeah, somehow get it to stick on the furry side. I guess that won't matter because I've got these to stick on the high parts. Hmm, what do you think? Should I? Yes? No, no, yes. Tell you what, I'm going to cut one out. I'll cut one out. We'll see how we go. I'll be back. Okay, right. Well, ah, that was a um, epic, epic disaster. Um, for one, nah, this stuff just falls apart. And then I've got all this fluffy. And oh, God, I made a mess. Ah, interesting. Oh, well. Um, so, yeah, no. <sighs> now we'll clean all that crap up again. God, I'm a moppet. Anyway, um, that theory didn't work at all well. So, plan D. I'll be back. Plan D. We have a new plan. Uh, digging around the house. Just spent an hour walking around, looking around stuff. But I found this. Underlay. Flooring underlay for um, this, uh, yeah, whatever you call that stuff floor um it's a bit thin but doubled up would be perfect i got plenty of it nobody here to tell me you can't use that so i'm going to give this a crack so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go around the edge do that find the line you can see what i mean so if i go around the edge like that mark it down find the line cut it with a pair of scissors and then do the same again for another piece, but just slightly bigger, so that I can slide the bottom piece under that lip all the way around there. Hopefully I can squeeze one in just like that, tack it down, use some contact glue, stick that down, uh, and then get the, uh, the next piece in, but not tucked under, so it just sits on level with that lip. That should provide not only more insulation, but um, yeah, hopefully it'll provide a solution. We will see. I'll do one and let you know how I'm going. Back soon. Right, stage two, three, four. Well, I don't bloody care. Um, it seems to be effective. First layer, tucked in nice. Um, there is a gap and a lip. I reckon one more layer should just about do it. Um, so I'm going to cut another one out. Uh, stack it on top. Uh, I've got so much of that stuff. So I'm just going to keep scissoring and cutting and chopping and changing and get the glue out at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm doing time lapse as well from my on high tripod, which is the staircase. You see, full of all these modern, wonderful editing suites and ring lights and all these stuff that these YouTubers use. It's not what you need. You need dining table, a bed, a floor, and a bit of ingenuity. That's all we need. So I'll be back. Have fun watching. And please, yeah, like and subscribe. I really do need the help. Thanks, guys. Right, finally. That didn't take long. Pff, much. Um, here we are. Got uh, every little piece cut. Double layer in all of those and those. Single layer in that one because of the plenum. Um, now the fun begins. It's all well and good having them sitting here looking pretty and all this sort of stuff. But when it comes to using contact adhesive, not got much experience with that stuff. And I know from what I've heard, seen, watched, you get one shot with this stuff. So. Do this. So, situation is, pull all these off, one layer of glue, first layer down, second layer of glue, second layer down, piece of cake. Yeah. 
never done this before, contact blue, should be fun. And yeah, two cameras, how's this for editing? I've got one there and I've got one there. Balanced on the chair, sitting on the stairs. Who needs tripods? Who needs dome lights? Here we go. I've never been in two places at once. This is weird. I taught you, or just what are you? Are you listening? Or are you listening? Ah, one of you is listening. Okay. <clears throat> Contact Ultra High Strength Permanent Bond. Hmm. Permanent. Never like the word permanent. Ah, okay. Gonna use this as a protector. And I'm gonna spray all of them. Not to the edge, but I'm gonna spray them all. Here goes nothing. Wish me luck. Oh, that's weird. That is weird stuff. Oh, that's really weird stuff. You know what? I don't actually think I need it. Now it looks like it's dripping a heck of a lot. I if I can fix that. Just something about turning the nozzle. Eh, I don't know how to turn nozzles. <sighs> Alright. Oh god, finger sticking already. Okay. Bear in mind, this is only tack. This is just to hold them in place. The pretty one is the top one. This one doesn't have to be pretty, thank God, because it's making my mess. <laughs> oh, God. Look at people use this stuff. It's terrible. Messy. All right. Uh, yep, that's all of them. Um, now what do I do? Now what do I do? They're gonna leave that for 15 minutes. You've got to coat both surfaces. So, that one is one of them and that goes in there. Ah. Okay. Spraying this. Ah. How do I spray this without it going everywhere? It's all finished. Um, yeah, uh -huh. it doesn't have to be great, it just has to stick. One, so that one. Oh man, ah, that one is there. You notice how the voice changes when you're thinking? Interestingly, it doesn't melt. Something else I hadn't considered. Um, oh God. Maybe doing all these at once was a bad idea, Gary. Bad idea. Um, committed now, though. So it's got to be done. Oh, this stuff's all over my fingers. 
And that goes that way, like that. So I've got to go to the back side of this one. Ugh. Doing a headline headlining soon. <laughs> oh god. Um, so what I don't need to do is don't need to stick that. Oh god, fingers are sticking together. <laughs> this is really bad. This is really messy. Ah oh, dear. <laughs> Can't oh, press the button down. Just, ooh, oops, I think that hit the floor. Sorry. Oh, this is a bad idea. Yeah, and I'm going to put that there just for a tick. Yeah, because I think I need to wipe up some of this glue. So I'm going to wipe that off anyway. Oh God, stop to me fingers. Uh, next. And the last one is that one which goes that way down, so it's that side. Bit of a bend, bit of a bend. Yeah, trying not to get it all over the thing. And if you start to tell me you should be spraying it from further away, God, don't you think I know that? I'm trying not to get it all over the floor. <laughs> I'm in a mess. I'm committed now. Oh, yuck. You believe this crap. Um. Now what have I got to do? I've got to wait like five to ten and then I lay the first layer on. That's the plan. So five to ten, first layer goes on. Oh, yuck. Uh, <laughs> this is crazy. Um, yeah. I'll come back to you. Very nearly forgot something really important. Gotta clear out your nozzle. Always good to have a clear nozzle. I have a theory. You're not really a true do-it-yourself mechanic. You're not really a do-it-yourself mechanic unless you've used brake cleaner to wash your hands. It's fine. It doesn't hurt. Did the brake clean and never killed anybody, I'm sure. Don't quote me on that, but I'm sure. Okay, has it been five minutes yet? Yeah. Five? Five? Ten? Maybe five? Oh, I don't know. Um, so where did I start? So I started... Here. So that one is that one. That one is that one. That one is that one. Now it's a good one to tack him up. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll turn this one on again. Okay. Um, it's been yeah time. So. Horrible 
messy, pain in there, bum. And you get one go at it, guys, one go. Do not cock this off. Because all that work and time, cutting all this, it would be very, very, very sad to bugger it up. It's really small, eh? Don't get much time. Oh, kind of move it here. Yep, you don't. Once it's down. <laughs> oh, oops. I swore it again. So, trick. Edges in. Edges in. Get the edges down and in. And they can slide, and then you should be able to level it calmly. I'm going to be from the front. To the back, nice and calm, nice and gentle. And there she is, number one. Well, I'll be. Turns out, even though this stuff is as a, this is an 18 month old who's had a vindaloo, it is. See, pretty effective. All right, I'll keep going. That's got to go that way around. I'm really glad it doesn't melt this stuff. So, edge in. Ooh, tricky with these shapes though. So, I've got to make sure to get the edges down so they can slide. I haven't got glue under the lips. I'll try to make one more, just for this very reason. And hopefully now I can go from there, down across. I can all get top down. Come on, come on, be nice, be nice. I'm doing this for your benefit, not mine. Mm, sort of. God, they're not wrong, you know. This stuff sticks. It sticks. Once it's down, you don't get a second shot at it. God. Yeah, so, let it be known. Well, you're probably already doing You'd be laughing your head off at me going, God, look at this Moppet. He's got no idea what he's doing. And you'd be dead right. <sighs> but, that's two. Okay. I'm growing more fond of this contact loop, even though it's really messy. And I've probably got some on the floor. Yeah, well, if I suddenly start walking and suddenly stop on my shoes stuck in, it can't come off. Don't actually like rollers. They're an overrated car. Oh, there it is. Contact it easy and melt paint from the inside, and I've turned the bonnet over and it's all frilled. No, I'm just kidding. I've seen people do this on the internet. I've seen people do this on the internet, but they've got workshops and they've got things and they've got stuff and they just do it and go, Look, and you just do this and you just do this and you just do this, and look, here's the end product and it's perfect. Nah, nah it's all well and good if you do it every day. But this is real world crap. This is real world stuff. This is me. Just being me. 
learning as I go, sharing the whole experience with everybody out there, which is a bit embarrassing, I must say. It's not really my style. However, a friend once said, you should share that information, it's really handy. God, why didn't I listen? Thanks, Nick. Anyway. All right, next. This one. Yep. Oh, 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 see, mistake, mistake, mistake. Do not push it down yet. No, not with a lot of move, because we're talking. see a ridge like that, you go, oh god, this is going to be nasty. So, no. No, no, that wasn't right. Damn it. Yeah. My first cock of hoop. Oh, you can just, oh no, you can't. <laughs> you really can't. It's just down, it's down. Oops. I gotta stop saying that. Fair enough, no we don't. I'm thinking, I tend not to think. Come on, get under there. Go on, slide under there. I bet I got the wrong one, because I know one of these is under there and one of these is over. No more than 15 minutes. Don't do the more than once, Gary, you're in good luck. Do not need to put it on for more than 15 minutes, it stays. Yeah. Let's find out what happens if you do, eh? Sorry about your sewing scissors, chuckle. And chuckles, another half. So then there's Chucky, the bride of, because she's nuts. Rescue the piece, that's the question. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, please, 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 please. Please, 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 just get on there. See, what I didn't account for, folks, is that there's actually, I didn't realise, when I laid these in, there's, there's bits of glue sticking up. Uh, yeah where they've joined some of these seams. So the glue's sticking up, there's no ridge. There's no ridge, it's just glue. So um, I missed that, but anyway, hopefully I should be able to just do that. All that, and Bob's your uncle. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Now. I think it's probably 30. Okay, it's warm. 
I'm sweating and a little nervous. drove a Range Rover, so in respect to Da Vinci, you can go and get stock, mate, because I own a Range Rover that needs constant attention. <sighs> there you go. Layer one. Well, that actually wasn't as hard as I thought. I think it may have took a lot longer than expected, but what I am going to do now is, you've seen it once, you don't need to see it again. I'm going to go and do it again, but first thing I'm going to do is get the brake clean and clean off all this excess glue. Clean off that group of glue on the floor over there because the other half will shoot me. Um, yeah, so I'm going to clean off excess glue, brake clean, and do the rest, and then we'll come back. And then it's the really tricky bit, which is the actual carpet. I'll be back. Good morning, dudes of the debts. And much has happened. Um, yeah, interesting night. Just got everything laid down. Um, lots of hammers and things sitting on where the glue was. Get it all sorted out. Um, so I'll explain the cardboard. I have a dilemma. I had a dilemma. Dilemma was that uh, the mat there was 1.5 meters long, a meter wide, and <laughs> Murphy's Law, and by the way, who was Murphy? Comment, please. Uh, Murphy's Law is that the company that I got this from this week have brought out an extra large piece that would have been perfect, but no, I bought it two weeks early, but anyway. So what I've got to do is get what is too small to fit on there. So I've decided rather than take it to this edge here, I'm going to take it to this edge here, which will give me a bit of overhang at this end, and then that's a bit better. Yeah, a bit of overhang at this end, which hopefully I can cut off to go along, well, along these these sides here to cover up the big holes. So I'm resorting to CAD. Gotta love a bit of cardboard aided design. Um, I have to get this shape so it's this line here so i've got to get this shape down through here along here through there down there all the way along there around there so what i've done is a piece of cardboard the right length taped into the same spot so it's perfectly square and then uh, i've taped it so that the the gap from there to there which is where i've got to go is the same um, and this is going to be my marker and I'm going to basically get a pen and follow the line and you'll see I put a hole in it I'm going to put a pen through there and work my way along so yeah CAD work got to love a bit of CAD work and then once I've got the shape on that cardboard I can cut it out I can turn the mat over mark on the back side which is the plastic sheet the sticky bit mark on the back side the shape and then um, cut it out and then I can start with a nice flat even shape hopefully it fits very well um, and then work my way across starting in the middle and working my way out just so you know what what this stuff is it's um, not promotion I bought this stuff myself it's car builders um, premium underbonnet insulation uh, five and a half mil thick Apparently some of the best stuff on the market. Um, I'm in Australia, uh, it's an Australian company, but you can get this all over the world. So uh, we'll, we'll make judgment at the end of the day, but um, from what I've seen of it, it looks okay. Um, there's yeah a few videos of people laying the stuff down, but they've got workshops and proper gear and everything. Like I said yesterday, 
here I am working on the dining table. You see, this is where we got a problem. Welcome to the journey. This cardboard isn't far enough back. So I need to move it. About square. Got my inbuilt tape measure. All right, let's try that again. Um, see, I haven't done this before. Right, let's go again. Yeah, that looks like it might be a bit better. That's the line I need, so. Stick that in there. And let's go. Not pretty. Not pretty. <laughs> Definitely not pretty. But you never know, it might work. Alright, let's do this way. watching the thought process you're watching it all so um, yeah time to start cutting let's get rid of that by the looks of this stuff it's fairly forgiving this felt so I'm hoping that being a complete and utter muppet and novice, it forgives me. I've heard of an animate, inanimate object being forgiving, but that's what they said. This stuff's very forgiving. Yeah, right. I believe that when I see it. But anyway. established as well and apologies for me murmuring I have established I need to get a mic I think a microphone might be handy even though I'm not like any professional video ish person video editor none of that I don't do any of that professional kind of stuff however for the benefit of all of my viewers both of you then um, <laughs> I think I need to get a mic. If you have any, if any of you, easy for me to say, have any recommendations for cheap, good mic that doesn't get in the way, because that's going to be my biggest bug there. If it's in my way, it will get thrown. Can things get? Can I? Stand things get in my way. So next, let's 
let's um, take you for a little look. So what we've got is now, so I know that, like I said, the mat finishes right there on the edge of that hinge. So that's why I've cut that just a little bit short. But I've cut that around the shape that I need. Yeah, it's not pretty, but when I actually lay the lines in, um, I'll allow a little bit and then uh, hopefully, hopefully it works okay. You see, I've not got that spot on in the middle. That's probably about there really, the reality of it for the land for this and that there. Um, but, I mean, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, next plan is to <coughs> find the center of this perfectly, middle measure, obviously, find the middle, get the middle, go over there, turn that over, um, get that turned over, do the middle, um, line this up, this cardboard on top of it, mark along it, make a cut. First cut's always scary. Apparently the first cut's always the deepest. Name the song. I'll be back. A plan. I have a plan. It's a plan. Close pegs. Why not? They say this is really hard to cut. So we're gonna try anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna waste a bit. Um do we need new shears or do I try scissors? Shears or scissors? What do you think? Thirty dollars shears. Let's see. Let's see how often it is. the truth. Plus five mil. This is forgot the plus five mil. Yeah. Good. Right, sorry, I've been faffing around. Um, not bad. 
so my gaps along here are pretty good. They're not perfect, but they're good. They're all right. So uh, pretty happy with it so far. Yeah, that'll fit to there, and that'll fit to there, and that'll all go in there. And Bob, your uncle, so is your aunt. I did not ask about Uncle Fred. So, and it looks like my fix with the JD world has worked. And you see now, what I've got is a nice deep chunk to spare. It goes all the way to here, which I'm really hoping is enough to do, hoping it's enough to do these edges. We'll see. So, time for a think. Time for a think. <sighs> it's a scary bit. It's a scary bit. Uh, got to get this started. So I figure I'm going to start in the middle, peel the backing off a little bit, lay in this piece, and then once it's set there, I guess I can just start to peel and start. But I guess I start along here, work my way out, work my way along, push it in. <sighs> No time like the present. Give me the book. All right. Let's start peeling. Um, better light would be good. I don't have better light, so this is a little bit better. So let's peel some of that. A little bit. Hold it under. Peel some of that. Let's hold it under. Out the way. seem to be fairly forgiving. Yeah, I see problems straight away. Down, down. So I want to see that hole. 
this one. It does give you some leeway. It, it stretches. So that's a first little stop. It does stretch. Pretty, especially that, but I can cut along them straighten anything up. But I think, I think we're up to something. Get rid of that, get rid of that, don't get them out. You just started. Kind of fun, nerve wracking. It's fun. I'm working with black. I can't see it. Damn thing, bro. Careful here, guys. 
you don't, do too much. So, got to cut around these, and almost, almost didn't get away with that. Getting an idea how long this stuff takes to do because it does take a while, but it would seem if you take your time, it's actually not too bad. You've got to take time. Impression. I generally do make an impression. Not necessarily always the right way, but nah, it's pretty cool. And people can pick what they want. Yeah, look at that. We have impressions. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to make a hole. Talking today, sorry folks. It's a bit boring, but you get the gist. I'll probably just speed this video up anyway. One side. Okay, one side. <sighs> and this video is still going. is very pliable. I recommend, yeah, that you, if you just start, this stuff's actually really, it's really good. So, um, what was that brand again? I'll start to give it more of a push. Uh, what's it called? I'm going to bring in insulation. Car builders. The brand is literally called car builders. Under bonnet insulation. It's very good. Um, so yeah, 
kudos to those guys. It's a good product. Made in Australia. Excellent. Always like that. But yeah, it's a good product. It works very well. I'm liking the lining that I've done. That lining with the extra layers, I'm liking that. Because it's giving me some really nice little lines. They're going to look, well, they're going to look nice. But yeah, like I said, don't rub it though. That's the only downside to this stuff. If you rub your hands across it, you just you make it go all fluffy and furry. And the guys do say if you run a heat gun over it, I say, and it'll melt them things back and it'll be fine. But I'm off grid. I don't have the benefit of <sighs> excess power. I'm limited to what I can do using a heat gun. Um, yeah, that's, you're probably aware. Anytime you're creating heat, you're using a lot of energy. And energy is something we don't have an abundance of. We've got enough. Enough to run the house, but um, not enough really to do everything I'd like to, like air conditioning for one. <laughs> that would be nice. If anyone knows any cheap ways of doing air conditioning, please let me know. Good way to do air con when you're off grid. When you're off grid, you haven't got any money. Current back bars, 63 cents. God love it, eh? God love it. But 63 cents in the black is better than 63 cents in the red. So I'll take it. And I'm not a money driven man. I'm a pleasure driven man. I'll take it with you. So, you might as well oh, enjoy it. So, yeah. Kids will be fine. You don't need to save and save and save. I had a conversation with my parents a while back. They were wonderful people. I, mean, just, I know we all say that about our parents, but um, mine are genuinely really nice people. Um, even if they weren't my parents, I would like them because that's who they are. Um, and uh, yeah, I had this conversation with them about, you know, don't worry about breathing anything. Just if you want to make sure you, something you need to do or you want to do, not necessarily need to do, something you want to do, go ahead and do it. You know, like, don't you worry and think, oh, if I spend all the money, there'll be nothing left. Well, that's the idea. That's what money's for. To be spent. You never know what's around the corner. You know, I, I know that first hand. I literally didn't know what was around the corner. And it almost killed me. But it wouldn't change anything. I am who I am today because of that. And because of my parents. So, yeah. You got... If you've got money, use it, spend it, play, you're here for a good time, not for a long time, you get both bonus. Not, well, that's how it is, which is, as they say, this is actually going really well, because I'm blabbering now, because I'm getting a little more confident. I was quiet before because I wasn't confident, but now, this is really starting to come together and start to look the part. And I'm going to be so happy with this when it's done. These little bit lines are really dead chuffed with this. Dead chuffed with this. Yeah, excellent stuff. Yeah, car restore. Um, premium on the bike mapping. Brilliant. So, uh, whoever did the R&B, do stuff, do the job. And I really don't care whether 
you know, some of the materials for this were, I don't know, Chinese, Mexican, Taiwanese, or any of these places that produce stuff. I don't care. What I care about is end product. Somebody somewhere had a job because I'm doing this. That's important. to make a very long curve. Don't know how. Scratchy head time. solution for filming. Phone's full. Sorry if you missed all that. Sorry. So, I've got a plan. My plan is this. I'm going to lay this in the front pack. Just like that. Oh, 
machine. There we go. Let's get the rest of this backing off, shall we? Still recording. Okay, finally, at last. Um, yeah, that was a interesting thing to do, but pretty happy with it. Uh, still got the edges to do. I'm gonna work that out. But using this edge rather than bringing it over, I'm hoping I've got enough left. But all in all, it's not bad. Not bad for a complete beginner. I'll go over it again with a the roller. There's a the little bits that get picked up with the camera that I can't see in my eyes, but um, yeah, not bad. All right, gotta keep going. Try and get this bonnet back on this afternoon. Beautiful. It's going to be great. Thank you. 
Dudes, dudettes, it's done. There it is. So, yep, I can recommend that stuff. It's good, it's fine. I'm glad I put the extra layers in. It's made a nice, nice finish. But um, yeah, all in all, pretty happy and managed to do a join along the base of that to make the side bits come up. So I ended up not having to have a large piece. I just had to adapt what I'd got. So sacrifice them off the front here to make it so I could fit it up the sides. But that's it. <laughs> Job is done. Um, yeah, pretty happy. So if you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, um, please. That would be awesome. I'm buggered. But, um, yeah, really happy. Now, uh, call my mate back, slap it back on the car, and um, what's next? Mm, headlining. Yeah. More contact glue. Oh. Anyway. Dudes, dudettes. So, there you have it. That's it. She's all in, looking nice. Very happy with it, how it's come out, considering I'm a complete and utter novice. Never done this before, but that stuff's very good. That horrible blue pipe's going. Cannot stand that. So yeah, there it is. A um, couple of days work, but I took my time. You probably could do it in a day. And I did the extra layers, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. It's, um, it's a fun little project. Um, it's well worth trying if you're any good with this kind of stuff. Um, have fun, enjoy yourselves, take care, and uh, Please like and subscribe, it'd be awesome. So next, hmm, what do I do next? Ta-ta's.